Hi, it's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser, and I'm back with more of my list of costume jewelry designers and their marks. Now, this is what you're going to look for. These are the designers you should be looking for and the marks, so you can understand what's what. Couple different things. Remember, I appraise 50,000 objects every year. Costume jewelry is one of the things that I appraise a lot of, so I want you to know which pieces to find. First one up is Ben Amoon. I've talked about Ben Amoon before. Very well known costume jewelry designer to the celebrities. What are you looking for? Great designs, great materials. Yeah, of course, it's not fine jewelry, but it is, of course, very high end costume jewelry with gold plating, 22 karat gold plating, oftentimes. And you'll also find, of course, some of the best faux pearls in the business. So look for these types of things. The Ben Amoon mark is very well known and very easy to identify. It's his name. So you can find that. The other thing I want you to look for are they're trying to imitate fine jewelry. So these are the, the makers who are trying to imitate some of the best fine jewelry pieces. But also look for, of course, these classic styles and a little fun style, styles that are kind of, you know, in vogue at a particular time. So you'll see them on the red carpet. Ben Amoon you want to look for. The next number two on the on the list is of course Swarovski. Swarovski is one of the most desirable costume jewelry names. Why? They're the one of the premier crystal manufacturers and basically what they're doing is they're putting their crystal in some of these great vintage and contemporary pins, brooches, earrings. You can see all kinds of pieces and you want to think about those pieces which are really the pieces that everyone's looking for like the celestial moon and planets the saturn planet pin and earring set really desirable a lot of people looking for it five hundred dollars for the set if you find the vintage one it's of course enamel work and you look for figural pieces with swarovski and you also look for of course enamel work the logo is very characteristic of course the swan logo that many of you know but there's also an SAL logo that a lot of you overlook. So make sure you know the different, of course, Swarovski logos that take place at different times, that are used at different times. But don't forget them. And of course, I like the earrings. I like the brooches. I like you to find some Swarovski, of course, costume jewelry pieces for yourself. This next one is Jomaz. Number three on the list is Jomaz. Jomaz actually um, comes out of, it's a firm that comes out of another very famous costume jewelry design firm that I've talked about before, Mazer Brothers. Jomaz stands for Joseph Mazer of Mazer Brothers. Mazer Brothers, great costume de jewelry design pieces. And what do you look for? You're looking for, of course, those pieces that are set stone, that are basically set faux stones. They're set faux stones that are very, very high end. Mazer Brothers, I'm not, I talked about that in another video and of course other list videos that I'm doing for you. Talked about Mazer Brothers there, but here Jomaz is the one I want you to look for. And the, the mark is very easy to identify. It just says Jomaz, J-O-M-A-Z for Mazer, M-A-Z-E-R Brothers. So it's just sort of a combination of the, of the names. And basically look at the beauty in the way in which this particular element is put together. So if you look at this, you can see that just like copying fine jewelry, they actually take very, very small crystals, place them in like diamonds would be set in a nice gold tone metal setting. And then you've got these wonderfully faceted cut and pronged set large blue stones. Really very nicely done. Of course, uh, very close. You know, a lot of people can mistake these pieces for fine jewelry, but this is a great one. So there's that. Of course, number three on our list is Jomaz. Number four and five actually have similar names, but I don't want you to get confused with this. Number four is Bellini. Bellini, all capitals, you can find it in many places, all capitals, vintage jewelry. Bellini is a maker that has been around for quite some time, making these lovely pieces, figural pieces, you know, animals and, and bugs and this kind of thing in brooches, also earrings, cluster earrings they're known for too. But Bellini has this very straightforward logo design of just the name Bellini in all caps, uh, oftentimes found on the back of many of their pieces. And they'll usually have a very nicely detailed gold tone metal or silver tone metal pieces uh, really nicely put together like this particular pin. 
The other thing, the other one that I want you to be aware of is a little bit more recent. Bellini by Form Art is the one I want you to look for too. Seems like the same, but this is number five on the list. Bellini by Form Art is actually another one of those Bellini firms that I want you to look for. There's lots of Jew it's custom jewelry firms named Bellini, let me tell you. So this one is actually uh, in, uh, introduced in the 19, late 1980s. And this one has that specific Bellini by Form Art logo on it. Now, with these, I want you to look for a little bit more of evening wear, dangling earrings, a little more sparkle, a lot going on around the face, around the neck, bigger pieces, more statement pieces than Bellini. So they have a similar name, but they're very different and different companies too. That's number four and number five. Number six is Hattie Carnegie. I've talked about Hattie Carnegie too. Hattie Carnegie is one of the premier costume jewelry designers and very, very well known for beautiful construction and wonderful design. Very well known for the designs. First of all, construction is really beautifully done. The back looks as good as the front on a lot of these pieces by Hattie Carnegie. And the Hattie Carnegie mark, the emblem is a oval, oval, oval logo design mark, very easy to find, Hattie Carnegie, so you won't miss it. But when you're looking at Hattie Carnegie, I want you to look for those designs, and I want you to look for different shaped faux stones, glass and such, prong set as if they were real fine jewelry, and they're also mixed with metals. So you're going to see a metal like hanging, dangling little metal pieces. You might see some chains or some links, and then they're going to be juxtaposed right against very different sizes, shapes, and different cuts of uh, crystals or rhinestones or, of course, um, pieces of colored glass. So that's what you're looking at with Hattie Carnegie. Oftentimes you're going to see these pieces are statement pieces. Even for everyday wear, they really are quite beautifully designed. Costume jewelry maker, you know, number six should probably be number one, but number six is Hattie Carnegie. Number seven is Irwin Pearl. Do not miss Irwin Pearl. If I have to pick some of my favorites, Swarovski and Ben Amun and Irwin Pearl, beautiful. Established in the middle part of the 20th century, very long standing, of course, um, costume jewelry designer. And Irwin Pearl has either an E Pearl mark or you can find Irwin Pearl. The whole name is actually on a logo tag with an EP, Irwin Pearl, and then an EP mark too. So look for them. Remember, different marks happen in different time periods and you've got the same firm, so the same design. You can even buy Irwin Pearl today. But basically, uh, the pieces have a lovely construction and Irwin Pearl pieces have some of the most popular pieces that you're going to see made for the big, of course, distributor houses, houses like uh, Tiffany and others. So a couple of different things. The X and O necklace, which is oftentimes known as the hugs and kisses necklace and bracelets, which were really popular in the late 20th century, as well as some of these necklaces that have gold tone metal or silver tone metal, and they're actually placed um, one by one. Sometimes they're bicone, you know, those forms that are beads that are sort of a bicone or two, looks like two triangle beads together. Um, oftentimes you're also going to see some of those classic forms only in costume jewelry from, of course, Irwin Pearl. So don't miss that one. Uh, number eight is Benedict, New York. And make sure you spell Benedict right. It doesn't have a C. It actually has a K in it. Benedict, New York. This is where you're going to start to learn about construction of costume jewelry pieces. For example, if you look at the back of a pin of Benedict, New York, you're going to see that they cast, of course, the piece of base metal and they might gold plate it or gold tone metals. And then they're going to take that casting, which is in one direction. Sometimes it's like a cross form. Sometimes it's a, um, an angular form or an abstract form. And then they just basically put a a nail or a pin through the middle of it and then they rotate it. So they use the same casting over and over and over again. You can see it in this pin with this green faux emerald stone in the middle of it. So you can see it there. You'll also see one of the characteristic things about, about of course, Benedict New York is this three dimensionality of their brooches as well as the colorful stone. The thing that I like about Benedict New York is in fact they use cool metal colors and they'll use cool colors of the stones with of course those silver pieces. They'll use warm colors of the stones that they set with gold pieces. 
and it's pretty typical. So if they have a piece of silver toned metal that they're using on maybe a brooch or earrings or a necklace or a bracelet, they're going to introduce blue or purple or cooler toned faux stones. If they have a piece of gold, right, and they're using gold metal colors, they're basically going to use more of the warm colors, like, of course, this brown set stone. And look at those prongs. Those prongs are beautiful. Those prongs really don't look like costume jewelry prongs. They look like fine jewelry prongs. So look for that. The details are in what is the construction and, quote, unquote, the settings or the hardware of it all. That's a nice one, too. Number nine on my list is Koro. You all know Koro. You know the characteristic Koro cursive letter uh, logos. A lot of people don't even, can't write cursive or never learned cursive, you know, uh, cursive or script letters, C-O-R-O. -O. Koro designs, very popular, very well known all over the place, really. You can usually find Koro. They had big productions, made a lot of pieces. They're usually classic, classic for their metals, oftentimes using enamel, right? So they'll make floral design earrings and then they'll paint in with the enamel work very nicely done and the classic pieces they're for everyday wear you know you'll see them a lot for everyday wear they were very um, comfortable with making of course the sets necklace bracelet earrings necklace bracelet earrings pin that kind of thing very typical for coro so you can find a lot of coro sets out there and they were dedicated to of course the metals the base metals and being of course very very uh, clean designs, classic designs, but for everyday wear. And then there's number 10. Number 10 is one of my favorites, Hobe. Hobe, easy to find. It's the H-O-B-E, Hobe with the accent, of course, Mark. And that's the logo you want to look for. Usually found on the back of the costume jewelry pieces. Hobe's casual pieces, you know, beads that are, that are glass in pastel colors. Maybe they're floral. Maybe they're, they're leaf designs. And Hobe also has a lot of pieces that are just fun, but a little bit sort of for maybe cocktail hour, right? So it's not kind of out to dinner formal gala kind of jewel costume jewelry, but maybe more for cocktail hour. And uh, those pieces you're going to see, again, like Hattie Carnegie in a sense, but I think a little bit younger and more youthful in their designs. Um, Hobe will show you this, this coming together or this contrast of these nice cut pieces of glass, these cut faux stones and rhinestones, faceted cut pieces, and then they'll add some metal work with it. But usually you have a very, very uh, diverse color scheme. So lots of different colors working at once in Hobe pieces. That's my list of the costume jewelry designers and their marks that you need to find. I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.